Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, there's a cup of tea with Captain Steve episode. Beautiful cup of tea, I must say. And I've been hit on up by Andrew Lake, also known as a Dutch 66 inside of the verse, people. So let's jump on over onto the Tinterwebs. And here's my messages with Andrew Lake. So Andrew Lake, being one of my super members, gets access to hit me up on social medias. You can see here I applied with two, and within 10 minutes of him hitting me up. Oh, gosh. And he's letting me know that Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be airing, or could be. Rumour has it. Yeah, so maybe even Monster Hunter 6. Anyway, Dragon's Dogma 2 is the one that I'm really interested in, as much as I love freaking Monster Hunter. But anyway, we've got the Dragon's Dogma 2 gameplay showcase. Now, this has been reposted by IGN, and it looks like the quality only goes up to 1080. Um, so I'm going to hit play on this. I might keep it in that small window, because if I make it big, it goes all pixely and artifacty. So yeah, I'm just going to hit play. You can see that I watched it up to there. Now, the first bit, there's no talking, but then... One of the developers chimes in so i'm going to talk a little bit but then the developer's going to talk and then i'm going to come back uh, at least that's what i'm hoping it's going to be like for the rest of the video we'll see anyway so here we go this is my reactions to this let's hit on up a play on this one so uh, straight away opens with a griffin and what i'm noticing already is the feather textures look a lot better the hair textures on the characters look amazing the environments look freaking great there's a lot of recognizable characters from previous so you've got the goblins you've got the harpies you've got the cyclops all the good known bad guys it looks like there's different world traversals different environments i'm loving the flame effects and indestructible environments at that as well and there's a chimera as well on oh, that looks like the holy archer or, or magical archer my favorite technical ability okay right this is where i think the developer chimes in so i shut up for a moment i'm hideaki itsuno the director of dragon's dogma 2. dragon's dogma 2 is a narrative driven action rpg set in an immersive fantasy world designed to place player choice at the heart of the gameplay experience. The action gameplay is designed to challenge your creativity, and although this is a single-player adventure, AI-controlled companions will accompany you throughout the experience. Today, I'd like to show you a little of what you can expect from the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 with this new gameplay footage. In Dragon's Dogma 2, up to three AI-controlled beings called pawns can join you on your adventures. Players can choose from four starting vocations that determine how they will play. Of course, you will be able to change your vocation at any time by visiting vocation guilds. For now, let's look at the fighter vocation. Wielding a one-handed sword and shield, the fighter excels in melee combat. As a fighter, you can cut down enemies with a sword and protect yourself and your party using your shield. So that was a starting class before, which is good to see it return. As we keep going, we can see some harpies in the distance. As an archer, you'll be better suited to take down enemies above you. Cool. Let's see what they can do. The archer is a vocation that uses a bow and arrow to attack enemies from a distance. Make full use of your arsenal, including exploding or blighting arrows. You can also aim at your enemies like a third-person shooter. That's the class I usually started out with beforehand. The monsters of Dragon's Dogma 2 behave organically in the world around them, and will even react to players by using their wits against you. The AI was good in the first one. Next, I would like to show you the mage in action. Cool. Mage Mages again. Mages excel at long-range magical attacks, as well as healing and support spells that bolster your party with various enchantments to give allies an advantage in battle. Mage was the a starter one before. The more advanced and powerful the magic is, the longer the incantation will take. And then you could go to sorcerer later. Well, that's cool. And nice I see in that back. to the pawns you adventure with, you will occasionally act with other inhabitants of the world. I like the water. The water looks awesome. We're trapped. Is that a rock golem over at the back? No! Yes! No, it's not! It's a cyclops by looks of things. A rock golem would have been better though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Lastly, let's take a look at the thief. So before we had Stridus, this As is a new. Thief, you use daggers to strike at your enemies relying on agility and quick attacks. Cool. 
use swift step to quickly move away from nice. enemies after an attack. Look like he's done a psycho crusher. The against massive monsters is to find openings and cling on to the enemy to deal damage. That's pretty cool. Fighting head on is always an option. But it's a good idea no. to utilize the environment around you while engaging with enemies. Oh, look at the water effects on that. Between your chosen vocation, diverse terrains, and the particular monster you're up against, each encounter challenges players and their party to use their creativity to succeed. Cool. Oh, this Two looks great. prosper in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Vermund, the human kingdom, and Batal, the land of Beestrin. So not Grandsis, then. In Vermund, the Arisen who slay the dragon have ruled as kings for generations. Well, they're this immortal. This land of lush meadows and rolling hills is ripe for exploration. Cool. In contrast, Batal is a rugged canyon nation with a city built on the site of ancient ruins. It is home to the Bistrin and their unique culture. Cool. That should the be fun. The of Batal offers players a different experience from the human kingdom with diverse environments to explore and monsters to encounter. That's pretty cool. In your adventures, you might come across people who call out to you. Oh, have you some business with the apothecary, sir? <laughs> Other times, you might receive quests from people who you aid. I'm only laughing because that's very similar to the first one. Heavens. Thought I'd never make it. If I might be so bold as to impose upon you again, would you be willing to accompany me? The, act the, the, the acting was always quite cheesy, Pawns but I love that. Knowledge of a quest may be able to guide you to the right location, but it is up to the player to decide whether to follow them or not. Pawns support you throughout your adventures and may come to your aid when you are in trouble. Go. To complete your quests, you can ride ox carts to travel to major locations. So what about fast travel? But be aware, as you might get attacked en route to your destination and have to decide how to tackle the situation. Okay, cool. During the ride, you can choose to close your eyes to quickly arrive at your destination. Fast travel. Go. Cool. So I don't know about the rift stones and fairy is ever portals. Passing, even while riding an ox cart, and the environment around the player constantly changes. Great, I love that about the first Nighttime one. Nighttime is especially dangerous. Yeah. Ghouls and ghosties. To eliminate your surroundings, you will be enveloped in pitch black darkness where you can't even see your feet. Cool. Also, there are dangerous monsters that only appear at night, so you need to be careful when adventuring in the dark. This is so cool. If you have a camping kit, you can find a campsite to spend the night and recover your health. Well, that's new. Good evening, Arisa. <laughs> really, that's their voice, is it? Okay. Tis the honor of my life to share your journey, Arisa. I would have imagined it being a bit more gruff. To wrap up, I'd like to introduce some advanced vocations that become available as you progress in the story. Cool. The Mystic Spear Hand combines magic this is a new one. and weapon-based physical attacks. A oh, nice. They use their duo spear at close oh, look range at that. and magic at long range. Oh, I like they it. They can also use magic to block an enemy's movement or throw multiple items at once. A bit like Mystic Knight. Oh, the wow. Magic Archer is a vocation my favorite that one. further specializes in long-range attacks with magical arrows. That's my favorite Adama vocation. Healing and providing support to your allies, they can learn a skill that releases a powerful attack over a wide area in exchange for reducing their own maximum HP. What? And of course, there are other unique vocations you can look forward to. We have a playable version of Dragon's Dogma 2 at the Tokyo Game Show Capcom booth. Oh, can't you put the demo Depending on PlayStation on the Store? Make, each player can experience very different playthroughs. We're very much looking forward to the impressions of those who get a chance to play. Oh, Dragon's Dogma 2 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Steam. But no release Please date. Stay tuned for more information. Oh, give us a demo. Please put the demo on the store. That'd be awesome. Ah, oh. see the feather textures.
Oh my days, people. This this looks freaking awesome. Right, well I'll just turn the music right down for a second. Let's just let's just have that in the background for a second, people. That's that's freaking mental, isn't it? Really is cool. Um I'm as you, probably, you can probably tell, I'm, I'm fairly excited for this one, people, inside the viewerverse, uh, for multiple reasons. I mean, hold on, let me just uh, let me just show you my playthrough of Dragon's Dogma, because I've got a playlist over here anyway. So here you go, here's my playlist of Dragon's Dogma. Now, I played through Dragon's Dogma on every single difficulty, and in the end, I platinumed this game. And you can watch the playlist back to back. I mean, there's quite a lot of episodes in there, but it's a full sort of playthrough, just the best bits. I've cut out all the boring stuff, and it's, it's heavily edited, this one, with just my best bits. And it, yeah, you've got the whole boss fight, you've got me getting my platinum sort of trophy there. I love Dragon's Dogma. I chose not to play Skyrim and to play Dragon's Dogma. That's how much I loved Dragon's Dogma. And you can see here, it was over a year ago. You know, my channel was fairly new back then. So these haven't got a lot of views on. So if you are to watch this full playlist, one, you're doing me a massive flavour. And two, it's, you're going to freaking enjoy it. I hope you are anyway. I mean, there's a couple in there that have done OK, but a lot of them have got pretty low views. I put the video, I put this playlist inside the video description. Go watch it up and I think you'll get an idea of just how much I love, love this game. And if you are playing Dragon's Dogma 1 in lean up to Dragon's Dogma 2 and you're on PlayStation Network, there's a good chance my pawn is still there. You can add me as a friend, take her out on excursions. She's top level, she's like 99 or whatever the top cap is. She's freaking awesome. Her name's Phoenix, she's a little red demon girl. She's freaking great. I don't know whether she's on one of my thumbnails, she probably is. There she is, there we go. There's my pawn for hire. In fact, I'll put that in the background, we'll have that playing in the background, it's not very long videos. There you go, it's like a two minute video. But well, I'll just have that in the background, I'll have something behind me, mind I? But yeah, really, really enjoy Dragon's Dogma, and I'm thoroughly looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2. The things that excite me about that, I mean, you can see the graphical quality, even on Dragon's Dogma 1. It still holds the test of time, but you know, the hair on here is quite flat. Some of the textures are quite flat. It's, the bump mapping isn't quite the same as what we just saw in that previous game, or the trailer. But that was only in 1080p, so I'd like to see it in 4K. Hopefully it's going to run in freaking 4K at 60 frames per second, because that would really add to it. Otherwise, it's not a massive great step up from the original, is it, really? I mean, the original looks freaking awesome anyway. It looks better than Skyrim, at least I think it does. Let me know what you think inside the video comments. But there you go, there's my little demon gal. I mean, she's level 59 there, but she did get up to level 99. Pretty powerful mage in this sort of area. I think I changed her to be in a bow wielder or something. I'm not too sure. Go find her. Anyway. A little mouthful of tea. Now, what I like about what we just saw is there's a continuation. It looks like the similar sort of bad guys that I'm quite familiar with. Hopefully they've added in a whole new repertoire of new bad guys. They've added in, in destructible environments, campsites, more interactions with your NPCs. Two different sorts of races in there, the Beastman, which is pretty darn sweet. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really eager to play this one. I've got nostalgia vibes, though. Am I biased? I mean, if you're seeing this game for the first time, with your eye peepers, if you've never played Dragon's Dogma 1, I'll be eager to hear from you in the comments. What did you think of that game trailer? Are you as excited as I am? I mean, do you think it looked as nice as Elden Ring? Do you think it's on par graphically? Anyway, people, that's all I've got for you. I thought this was freaking great, but, you know, like I say, I'm besotted with Dragon's Dogma. I love the game, so, yeah, uh, biased peeps. Anyway, until next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again, people in the viewers.